this mercenary band, you've been in there not overly too long, and as you settle in with the groups after pillaging and raiding the place, you notice one among them that stands out among the rest. A very huge man, well trimmed, a little over six feet, but doesn't appear that tall due to his massiveness. He is very good at what he can do, must have been doing this for quite a while. His fiery red hair and what really stands out about him is his eyes. The blue eyes that he, of a killer that everyone seems to agree with you with. You start to talk to him, and at first he seems, you know, um, like any other, but you notice how knowledgeable he is of many things. When you talk to him about certain subjects, he has the type of knowledge of a man who shouldn't be out pillaging and raiding everything, no matter how good he is. He can talk to you about various subjects of philosophy, history, he even knows about um, courts and you know and kings and all that stuff, that, you know, their politics and all that, as if he's done it before. Maybe he was a fallen lord or a knight fallen from grace or a scholar of some sorts. Then he tells you other things about his personal life that make you a bit unsettling. He knows a lot about sorcery and ancient beasts that you thought were legends. And as he tells you all these intimate details, you suddenly thought about legends you might have heard of, of a man that bears the same name as this guy you're talking to, Cain, an immortal wanderer who, according to the stories, is evil and malicious, yet he doesn't strike you so as you speak with him. Could this be the same one? How y'all doing? In the 1970s, a guy named Carl Edward Wagner left his field in psychiatry and decided to become a writer. So after years, he has been an author, a publisher, and an editor, particularly in the realms of fantasy and, and horror fiction. His most famous creation is Cain which you can find in two books that I have here. I got these from Science Fiction Book Club years ago. Unfortunately, they haven't sold them, but you can always check places like Amazon and stuff like that, or use bookstores. Here are all the collective works of the character Kane by Carl E. Wagner. Gods in Darkness, which has all three novels that, um, that Wagner has written of him, and Midnight Sun, which has all the short stories and a couple of essays and a couple of poems about the character of Kane. In the novels, they include Bloodstone, Darkness Weaves, and, and Dark Crusade. And this one has, you know, again, you could probably find paperbacks and such of his other various works. What I find interesting about this character, and I rank this character among there with Michael Moorcox, Elric Amelibene, Fritz Leibers, Faffer and Gray Mauser, and, and, oh, let's see, who else am I thinking of? Um, Conan the Barbarian, of course, from by Robert E. Howard is that the character, while it goes through various adventures as a, um, um, that you would find in typical sword and sorcery um, in, um, stories, particularly in that pulp fiction sort of feel that the author um, relishes in. The character himself, at times, can be just as much developed. He is amoral and immortal. He cannot die, you know, by old age. You can kill him if you're good enough. So far, according to stories, no one has been. How did he become immortal? Well. He was cursed by an insane god who created him. And that was his last, um, uh, the god cursed him with immortality right before Cain killed him. And what I find fascinating about him is, is that, um, you know, while Cain could do things you might think could be, um, that you would follow in a story, oh, well, he's just living in a hard world, and so, like Conan, he's just gonna do whatever he can to survive. But in Conan, you always root for him. Sometimes Kane, not so much. He can be the wizard up in the tower, despite the fact he, you know, he's not, a, a, you know, like the, you know, the traditional uh, twisted wizard up there, you know, casting dark spells just for evil being the sake of it. There, as Wagner being a former psychiatrist, he can give a, um, you can sense the depth of the character um, that Kane is about how why he would do such a thing. He is amoral because he lives in an amoral world, and he's on his own, so he can, you know, whoever he can befriend or love or trust will never last that long, and he'll always move on. He's a guy who not only is adept in sorcery from time to time, he can also, um, he is also at home in the kings and in, in the courts, as well as in the battlefield. 
in all the stories, he takes on, he shows various professions. He's hired to, um, to lead armies, or he can be an assassin, or what have you. And he's quite clever as well. Can't live all these centuries without being so. In the, story, in the novels, the one that sticks out the best for me is Bloodstone, which the original cover for that, and if you find an old paperback of it, is Frank Rosetta, where, you know, Kane is holding that bloody sword. You'll see that at the beginning of the video in the slideshow. He holds that bloody sword up in, in the air, and, you know, with the, with the green um, sphere behind him, and, the, and particularly that ring. And it's, one of the, it's um, very important to the story, where Kane is manipulating two warring kingdoms while, while trying to access this ancient alien technology uh, connected to this ring and a giant bloodstone behind him. In the short stories, you find um, very interesting ideas for him. For instance, let's see if I can find the ones, and if I can recall the stories involved. Undertow, the first of the short stories, where Kane is a sorcerer in a tower, and he is um, he has trying. He's captured this one girl he claims he loves, and this woman is trying to escape to the sailor. So, what's the conflict that's going to happen there? The Dark Muse. I particularly like that one, to where Kane is helping out this one um, poet and playwright, and trying to help him create the perfect story that for him, to, where he feels like he's reached his masterpiece and such, to where he was comfortable of it, and he helps him out through the. Uh, through this spirit or goddess that can give this poet what he's after. Cold Light, a very good um, story, to where Cain, um, uh, in an unfortunate um, event, uh, unfortunate consequences of his mortality, will go through a period of a deep depression or a black mood, um, just, just over the burden of his immortality, and he secludes himself somewhere until eventually he gets, um, recovers, and he's fit for life again. Unfortunately, while he's hiding out in this dead city, he is um, chased by a group of religious fanatics marking him as the most evil thing in all creation. He must be destroyed for the, uh, for the light of good. And for those, speaking of Elric Melibonate earlier, if you're an Elric fan, here is a one crossover story that um, was first published in, I think I have it on this shelf, of a um, by White Wolf, I think Mike Moorcock, the author, for once allowed other authors to use his characters, and one of them, which is strictly his elder characters, um, written by other authors. And Kane was and Kane was made with a crossover by Kari Wagner with Elric Melibane. That's in the Gothic touch. Mirage is a very interesting one. What will happen if Immortal Kane is tempted by another immortal, and what does that person have to offer, and how does Kane respond? And there are also three stories to where the author went as far as turned Cain into our world. And how and what is and what does Cain do there? And I will say this, um, if you ever get into this, is these are very adult stories here. They're not um, you know, kitty fair and stuff like that. I mean, they can be very adult situations. There's a couple of um, there's one story in particular where there's a you know, a sexual theme and all that. Um, and so, so I'm not going to recommend this for young kids. These are mature stories, but if you but if you do like the sort of sorcery genre, go ahead and check these out if you can. The Kane series by Carl E. Wagner. Um, fortunately, being the author dies, we don't get any new stories. However, the bright side is there's a chance you could collect all the stories and you could complete a collection. So that's my that's another one of my recommendations. Go out and enjoy. Thank you very much.